Welcome to this segment on uh, introduction to power electronics. And in this segment, we'll look at the role <coughs> and its various applications, and we'll also look at the requirements. As far as the role is concerned, uh, this power electronics acts as an interface between a source and a load. The source is normally the utility and your power company, and uh, it's usually providing a fixed frequency and fixed voltage. And uh, this load may require, uh, you know, voltage and frequency to be varied depending upon how we wish to operate this load. So we need uh, this interface between the source and the load, and uh, this power electronics consists of this converter and the controller, and the power normally flows from the source to the load, but uh, this may be reversed, the roles may be reversed, and the power flow may be in the opposite direction in this way as shown. Uh, we will also look at various applications of power electronics, and some of those are listed here. Uh, one important one is renewables-based electric generation, uh, electric and electric hybrid vehicles, uh, improving efficiency and uh, conservation, and uh, role of power electronics in information and entertainment uh, technologies, and uh, various uh, high-power utility applications. So let's uh, begin with a very important application of power electronics, and that is in wind turbines. So wind is a great resource uh, for generating electricity, and uh, this picture shows here uh, that uh, uh, we have these blades, and uh, there's a gearbox which is coupled to this generator over here, and uh, depending upon the, the wind speed, this, uh, these blades would turn at uh, different speeds, and therefore the voltage that is produced by this generator, this, this can vary. In this example, this voltage could be anywhere in this range, 0 to 690 volts. It's fairly low voltage for these very high-power wind turbines, for example, 2.3 megawatt. And uh, again, also the frequency could vary. So it's not a constant voltage and constant frequency. And... Uh, so a very uh, large amount of currents then come down this uh, almost uh, 300 feet long cable, 100 meters long, and uh, here is the role of power electronics. We need to convert this uh, variable frequency, variable voltage, which appears here on this side, to a fixed frequency and fixed voltage. For example, 690 volts at 60 hertz. And then uh, at the base of uh, these uh, wind turbines, uh, usually there is a transformer which uh, boosts this voltage from 690 to 34.5 kV, which is uh, kind of a become a standard collection voltage. And a lot of wind turbines are connected to this collection voltage, which is then boosted up to, for example, here, 261 kV. But certainly what we are interested in is in the role of power electronics where variable frequency, variable voltage is being converted into a fixed frequency, fixed voltage on this side. Uh, another very important application for renewables-based uh, electric generation is uh, use of uh, photovoltaic systems. And as you know, these uh, solar cells, they produce a, a DC output. So in this plot, the cell current is plotted as a function of cell voltage, and depending upon the sunlight that is falling on these uh, uh, solar cells and uh, uh, the temperature, we have different types of characteristics. You can see that uh, the highest power output is at the lowest temperature here, and uh, we, wish, we would like to operate at the knee of these characteristics. For example, over here, that's where the maximum power is. And... Uh, a lot of these uh, solar cells that are connected then in uh, series and parallel to make a solar panel, and uh, those solar panels may then again be connected in series and parallel. But the bottom line is that coming out of uh, these photovoltaic systems is a DC. So that's uh, the input to this uh, power electronic interface, 
and the output is the utility in which, into which we are feeding power. So uh, not only we need to change through power electronics, DC into uh, utility frequency AC, but also we may, may need to boost up the voltage in the process. So that's what this interface should do for us. Another application uh, is in uh, hybrid electric vehicles, and also people are talking about uh, just uh, electric vehicles. So uh, as you can appreciate here, that there is a battery, uh, which I could draw here, and then we have this uh, interface, and, uh, and then we have this machine here, which uh, normally acts as a motor, and the power is flowing from batteries to the motor, and uh, in case of regenerative braking, when we are trying to slow this uh, vehicle down, then the power flow could reverse, and the energy associated with the inertia of the system could then be recovered and uh, be fed back into the battery. So again, we see the role of power electronics here. Uh, the, another application is for efficiency improvement in various systems. And uh, here's a pie chart which shows that motors consume about uh, one half of all the energy we consume. And if you include the motors uh, that are there to drive the compressors in uh, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems, so combine these two here, they represent about two-thirds of all the electricity we consume, the motors. So improving the efficiency of uh, motor-driven systems is a very important uh, uh, aspect. And uh, as an example, we see here that we have a pump, and uh, it's uh, being supplied by this uh, uh, utility source. And uh, if we wanted to control the flow rate uh, in this, uh, through this pump, we'll need a throttling valve over here, okay? And this throttling valve uh, wastes energy. So uh, that would be the case if this pump was being driven at a constant speed. But we can get rid of this uh, uh, throttling valve. We, we do not need this anymore. Uh, if we can operate this uh, pump at an adjustable speed, uh, but, of course, it has to be done very efficiently. So uh, this is what uh, is shown here, an adjustable speed drive, driving this uh, pump at an appropriate speed to give the, the proper flow through this pump here. So what is this uh, adjustable speed made up of? Well, it's uh, on the input, of course, we have this utility source, and then there's a power electronics uh, converter over here, and this converter then supplies the motor with appropriate voltages and frequencies, and this motor is then coupled to this pump over here, right here. And there is also a controller here to control this whole system, okay? So here again, we see the role of power electronics is to take the 60 hertz or 50 hertz, whatever, as the case may be, uh, fixed voltage input and then convert it to right voltage and frequency to drive this motor at an appropriate speed to meet the flow rate requirements. Uh, another area of uh, energy improvement is in lighting. Uh, if you saw that pie chart uh, shown earlier, uh, lighting corresponds to approximately 20% of all the electricity uh, that we consume. And traditionally, we use these fluorescent lamps. They work at this uh, line frequency of 60 hertz or 50 hertz, as the case may be. But uh, it is possible to improve the energy efficiency of uh, lighting by going to the so-called compact fluorescent lamps. So here, this utility input is first needs to be converted through power electronics to anywhere in the range of 30 to 40 kilohertz, okay? And uh, then we apply those to compact fluorescent lamps. And uh, these are, uh, you know, a factor of three or four 
more efficient than uh, this normal incandescent lights. But the problem with these uh, compact fluorescent lamps is that uh, they contain mercury. So they have to be disposed of very carefully. A new development uh, is using these LED lights and uh, these LED lights require DC. So what is needed here is that we have the utility input, but uh, we need to convert it to DC uh, before we can use these uh, light emitting diode uh, type lights. Uh, information and entertainment technologies, uh, you know, of course, uh, when we have computers, they operate uh, uh, at uh, various uh, DC voltage levels. So incoming voltage uh, from the utility has to be converted to, to right uh, DC voltage levels. And so that's a big role of power electronics. Similarly, in uh, television sets and uh, phones, whether they are uh, wireless or conventional, uh, we need to uh, convert from uh, the utility source to whatever is needed in uh, these uh, equipment. Another big application of uh, power electronics is in uh, power systems, very high power applications uh, in utilities. And that can be in, in uh, transmission and distribution. So we'll, we will look at uh, two categories here. One is for high voltage DC, HVDC transmission systems, and the other one is in so-called FACTS, flexible AC transmission systems. So when it comes to HVDC transmission systems, uh, first we have to recognize that most of uh, the transmission lines are AC, but uh, under certain conditions, it makes uh, more economical sense to transmit power over high voltage DC lines. So in a one line diagram, what is shown here is let's say you're, you have AC system one and AC system two, and you wanna transfer power between these two systems, then uh, what we will do is we will transform this uh, system voltage to some higher voltage at this end through the transformer, and then it is converted into DC. So it is rectified into DC, and uh, its power is transmitted over this DC line, and then at the other end of this line, this DC voltage is uh, converted back to AC, and that's symbolized by this, and then there's a step-down transformer, and uh, then the power is fed to this AC system too. Of course, the roles of, uh, so the power, as I described, is, let's say, flowing in this direction, but of course, in, through these systems, the power flow could reverse and be in this direction here. So there are many, many such systems being used all across the world, and many new ones are predicted. So as you can see, there's a role of power electronics here in converting from AC to DC, and then from DC to AC. Uh, <clears throat> then there are so-called flexible AC transmission systems, FACTS, and they are used for controlling uh, voltages in in power system, and uh, they can also be used for controlling the flow of uh, power uh, over various transmission lines and distribution lines. So there are various devices such as uh, static war compensator, SVC, STATCOM, static compensator, thyristor controlled series capacitor, and uh, universal uh, power flow controller. I will not go into the details of this, and we will see uh, we, can, we can study all of these things individually. One of the big requirements on uh, these, uh, uh, any type of power electronic equipment is to have high energy efficiency. So if you look at this uh, block diagram shown to the right, uh, if uh, P sub N is the power coming in and PO is the power going out and there's a certain amount of power that is lost, and you can appreciate that uh, Pn is equal to the output power plus the power that is lost as, uh, as heat. And the energy efficiency is defined as uh, the output power divided by the input power. And if it's to be defined in percentage, then we can multiply this by 100 here. 
And so you can see that uh, to get uh, very high efficiency, uh, we need to minimize the power that is lost uh, as heat in this conversion. And uh, uh, this high energy efficiency is very important in uh, power electronics applications because, first of all, we are dealing with uh, large amounts of power, so there's a cost of uh, wasted energy, and moreover, uh, this uh, loss is dissipated as heat. So we need to have some mechanism to dissipate that heat, and uh, that increases the size and cost. So this uh, power density, which you can say is in terms of uh, uh, how much power can be uh, transmitted through here per unit volume, that power density in a way is related to uh, energy efficiency. So higher the energy efficiency, uh, chances are we can make it uh, uh, higher power density. And of course, there are other factors like cost, reliability, etc. So that uh, brings us to the end of this uh, segment. And in this segment, we saw the role of power electronics. And uh, then we saw uh, various applications, the host of applications. We just looked at a few. And then we also saw the requirements that we have in terms of efficiency, power density, cost, reliability, etc. Thank you very much.